Deus Ex, popularly considered to be one of the greatest PC games of all time. It was followed up by Deus Ex Invisible War, which most people seem to agree was pretty awful. But in late 2010, Eidos Montreal released the third game in the franchise, Deus Ex Human Revolution. And with the recent announcement of the fourth game, Mankind Divided, I think this is the perfect time to have a look back on Human Revolution and expose some of its more hidden trivia to the general public. So let's play a game. If you learned something new, I want you to give this video a like. But if you already knew all 10 facts before watching, I want you to give it a dislike guilt-free. Because if you already knew everything, that means I didn't do my job properly. Also, this video will be spoiling the entire game so you have been warned. So without any further ado, here are 10 things you didn't know about Deus Ex Human Revolution. If you were to head inside of a limb clinic and take a look around at some of the finer details, you might notice something interesting. You can see ads on the wall that say, Get Augmentations Now. But do you see the second part? Whether or not you can depends on your specific monitor, as well as how high your contrast setting is. Because right below that, in almost the exact same color as the background, is the phrase, Pay Later. Well, isn't that a frightening little bit of subliminal advertising? If you obsessively read any and all flavor text a game has to offer like I tend to, you might notice some interesting things on a few of the computers in Human Revolution. For example, you can see several characters from the original Deus Ex mentioned in some of the emails you run across, such as Morgan Everett, Beth Duclair, Lucius De Beers, and Joseph Manderley. You know, I love little details like this. It really does help with the feeling that you, the player, are just a small cog in a giant machine rather than being the center of the universe like in some other games, as well as helping to tie this game to the original. Adam Jensen and Megan Reed. I mean, really, can you think of a more perfect video game couple? The way he's constantly chasing after her like she's some kind of future Princess Peach, and the way she lovingly sells his DNA to evil megacorporations. It's like they were meant for each other! But their romance was far too strong to be bound within the simple confines of a video game, which is why the voice actor for Megan, Michelle Bebeck, is actually married in real life to the voice actor for Adam... You know, I'm not even gonna try. Regardless, that still warms my cold, augmented heart. In the original teaser trailer for the game, we spend about a minute with a camera rotating around a fetus that has been upgraded with augmentations, until the title comes up, Deus Ex 3, later to be given the subtitle Human Revolution. Now, Deus Ex fans being Deus Ex fans, I immediately started scouring every frame of the trailer for clues as to the plot. One of the more obvious things on display is the name Emil, written on the cyber baby's skin. Now, perhaps this is a tie-in to a late-game plot point of some kind. Nope. Well, how about a reference to the first game, maybe? Nope. Apparently, it's just a randomly chosen name. No meaning or significance whatsoever. Oh, really, Deus Ex? Isn't it more than a bit odd, then, that Emil also happens to be the name of the lead game designer of Human Revolution? No, I think this is some kind of Illuminati conspiracy, or possibly something set up by Majestic 12 to throw us off the trail. But either way, I will not rest until I get to the bottom of this. Remember those emails we talked about a few segments back? Well, not every email in the game is plot critical. Some of them are just concerning the everyday goings-on of a random person, while others are little in-jokes and references. Now, one of my favorites is an email fashioned in the same way as those Nigerian print scam emails, asking the recipient for his bank account details and promising huge rewards in return. But I wanted to mention one email in particular here. Do you know that you can find a direct transcript of the train opening from Half-Life 1, except with the word Black Mesa being replaced with Omega Ranch? Seriously, it's like word for word. Due to the high toxicity of material routinely handled in the Black Mesa compound, no smoking, eating, or drinking are permitted within the Black Mesa transit system. Anyways, I figured all the Valve fans that came from my portal tend to whitey kill would get a kick out of that. And now, it's everyone's favorite small but interesting trivia bit. 
Did you know that on the rim of Adam's implanted sunglasses, you can see the IDOS Montreal Studio logo? Yep, right there. Also, Trivia Bit 4.5 here, you can also see the IDOS logo during the cutscene that plays after the first mission on a building. David Seraph's office is, without question, one of the most detailed environments in the entire game. And with detail comes Easter eggs. For example, there's a hat with a DX logo on it, which stands for Deus Ex, obviously. You can also find a book lying on a table called Daedalus Complex. But my personal favorite is actually an inconsistency. Above the fireplace, you can see Seraph's portrait, but if you look closely, you can see that he has two augmented arms in the picture, but only one in real life. Perhaps the original plan by the dev team was to give him two augmented arms, but that was changed for some reason late in development, and then they just forgot about the poster. Did you know that Human Revolution is absolutely littered with references to the film Robocop? The original, not the remake. For example, the stories both take place in futuristic Detroit, and involve a man getting nearly killed in an attack and having their bodies replaced with machinery to save their lives. A more obvious reference can be found inside the police station, where a detective can be found talking about, quote, this sci-fi movie from the 1980s. And of course, I suppose we could also count the giant walking robots being a reference to Ed 209, but I think that's taking the motif a little too far. Later in the game, Jensen is walking around Pikus Communications in search of Eliza Kassan, the famous news anchor. So he walks into the room where he was told to meet up with her, and it turns out she isn't actually there, only a hologram. Now, keeping in mind that Eliza is actually a computer, it's worth noting the specific room number of the room is 404. That is a reference to the HTTP error code 404 file not found, because like I said, computer. Then he fights his way down to the Pikus secret basement, where he finds Eliza's main server and discovers her secret for himself. So that means that back in room 404, she was actually broadcasting the hologram from this location, which is labeled as room 802-11. That is a reference to the 802.11 standards protocol, better known by its trademark, Wi-Fi. So yeah, hooray for extremely geeky in-jokes! And now, ladies and gentlemen, sit down and prepare to have your minds blown. Did you know there is a secret conspiracy that underlies not only the Deus Ex series, but several games not even in the same franchise? They all have one linking theme, however, and that is that each of them contains a hidden reference to the book Fahrenheit 45... What? What do you mean to this one already? Oh, you're right. This was number one on my Bioshock 10 TYDK, wasn't it? Well, shit, I mean, this one would have been perfect for Deus Ex. It's about a secret conspiracy, for God's sakes. That's just fantastic. Now what? Um, did you know that in the final boss fight, the hacking screen looks like the Deus Ex logo? Yeah, I know it's obvious, but what do you want from me? I'm out of material here. Um, we can go to some theory crafting if you want. Okay, we can try that. Did you know that it's theorized that Adam is potentially the person JC and Paul Denton were cloned from? Think about it. They both look roughly similar, if you don't account for the difference in the original's age, and they all have exactly zero rejection to the augmentations in their body. Also, realizing that Adam's name is most likely a reference to Judeo-Christian mythology, what with him being the father to a new wave of humanity and whatnot, then we can potentially assume that the JC part in JC Denton actually stands for Jesus Christ. Pretentious? Deus Ex? Never. So everyone, that was 10 things you didn't know about Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you learned something new, remember to leave a like, and if you didn't, leave a dislike, because that means I didn't do my job properly. Also, if you want to follow my own personal ramblings, as well as help to inflate my ego even more than it already is, please do remember that Cyborg Gaming has both a Twitter and a Facebook profile, which you can find links to in the description below this video. But anyways, that's it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later. Thank you.